This video demonstration will review the steps necessary for making a bone level implant impression using the closed tray or indirect transfer technique. A dentium superline 2 implant will be used for this example. Please note that the open tray or direct pickup impression technique is covered in a separate video. The implant interface is common across all lengths and diameters of the implants in the Superline 2 product line, so the restorative clinician can be confident that all impression and prosthetic components will fit into each implant, no matter the implant size. In addition, there is only one implant analog to choose from the catalog, which is universal and is used for all implants in the entire Superline 2 product lineup. Select a closed tray impression coping from the catalog of the appropriate dimensions. The clinician has options to choose either a short or long coping length, a hexed or non-hexed interface, and four different emergence profile diameters. Two of them are pictured here. A short coping may be more applicable for posterior applications or in patients with limited mouth opening, whereas a long coping may be better for anterior applications or in regions where a taller impression coping is needed to match the cervical incisal heights of the adjacent teeth. A hexed or engaging interface should be utilized for single unit prosthetics, such as a single unit crown, where implant timing is crucial to record. Non-hexed or non-engaging impression copings should be reserved for applications where implant timing is not critical to record. For example, bridge or full arch prosthetics, provided that non-engaging prosthetic interfaces will be utilized for the final restoration. The four emergence profile diameters of the impression copings have been designed to match the four emergence profile diameters of the healing abutments. Although it is not critical, at the time of implant placement, if the surgeon chose the healing abutment diameter to match the proposed cervical diameter of the future restoration, then the restorative clinician could select the diameter of the impression coping based on the diameter of the healing abutment that was used. A wider impression coping could be used where a wider healing abutment was chosen, for example in a molar site, whereas a narrower impression coping could be used where a narrower healing abutment was chosen, for example in the premolar or lateral sites. For this video demonstration, an implant level impression of site number 9 will be made. A decision making process for the selection of the closed tray impression coping could proceed as follows. First, for choosing a coping height, a tall coping will be chosen so that it can match the cervical incisal heights of the adjacent teeth. Second, for choosing the interface, a hexed or engaging interface will be chosen so that the implant timing information can be recorded for the single tooth restoration. And third, for choosing the diameter, the surgeon placed a 6.5mm diameter healing abutment, so an impression coping with a 6.5mm emergence profile diameter could be used. So a tall, hexed, 6.5mm diameter impression coping could be chosen. However, for the purpose of this video demonstration, and for the ease of working with the stiff silicone for the soft tissue model, a smaller 4.5mm diameter coping will be used. Open the Dentium Prosthetic Kit. The restorative clinician may have the need to utilize the following instruments in order to take a bone level implant impression. The hex prosthetic drivers, which are handheld, with a tall version and a short version. The torque wrench. The hex driver for use in the torque wrench. And the slot driver, also for use in the torque wrench. Inspect the healing abutment intraorally and ensure that any debris is removed from the hexed slot in the top of the healing abutment. Place a 2x2 gauze across the back of the mouth to act as a throat guard for patient safety. Select the prosthetic driver. The prosthetic driver utilizes a 0.050 inch hex with a friction fit interface. This friction fit interface allows small restorative components such as healing abutments or prosthetic screws to be picked up by the driver tip with minimal risk of slipping off. However, do not take the risk of carrying components into or out of the patient's mouth by the driver tip without the use of proper patient safety, such as a throat guard. If components slip, there may be debris in the slot or the components may be old and worn out. Insert the prosthetic driver into the healing abutment. Twist the prosthetic driver counterclockwise to unscrew the healing abutment. In some situations, it may be too difficult to unscrew the healing abutment by hand. In this case, select the torque wrench and matching driver from the prosthetic kit and assemble the driver into the torque wrench. 
be sure to orient the direction indicator arrow facing away from the torque wrench handle. Insert the driver onto the healing abutment, using one hand to stabilize the head of the torque wrench. Unscrew the healing abutment until you feel it begin to rotate, and then unscrew the rest of the way with the prosthetic driver. In the unlikely event that the hex slot becomes stripped or unusable, the slot driver in the prosthetic kit can be used with a torque wrench as a last resort to remove a tightly seated healing abutment. All healing abutments are manufactured with a slot for this purpose. Clean any blood debris from the inside of the implant using thorough agitation with a microbrush and water, or several seconds of air water spray. Insert the closed tray impression coping onto the implant. If using an impression coping with a hexed interface, rotate the impression coping slightly while inserting it to ensure that the coping drops into the engaging implant interface. Once seated, insert the impression coping screw and use the prosthetic driver to hand tighten the screw to about five to 10 Newton centimeters. The impression coping does not need to be fully torqued into place. Verify complete seating by taking a radiograph. Ensure the central ray of the X-ray unit is directed perpendicular to the implant interface and not on an angle. Radiographic analysis of satisfactory seating should show no gap between the impression coping and implant neck, as well as a two-fixture screw thread gap beneath the prosthetic screw. If seating is not confirmed, reposition the impression coping and re-verify with another radiograph before proceeding. When taking a look at a cross-section of the interface, Please note that if the engaging impression coping is not seated properly into the hexed implant interface, the threads from the impression coping screw will not engage into the implant. In other words, the impression coping will remain loose. If you notice that after several turns of the screw, the impression coping is still loose and the screw is not engaging, try repositioning and reseating the impression coping by rotating it slightly before retightening the screw. Try in the customized impression tray or a rigid stock tray and verify appropriate fit before proceeding. Make the impression. First, syringe light body impression material on the occlusal surfaces of all the teeth in the arch. Then continue on with light body around the gingival margins and interproximal surfaces of the teeth adjacent to the implant. Syringe heavy body impression material around the implant impression coping and ensure it is fully surrounded. Have an assistant load the impression tray with heavy body impression material and then seat the tray intraorally. After the impression material has set, remove the impression tray from the mouth. The impression coping will remain attached to the implant intraorally. Analyze your impression. Verify that there is adequate adaptation of impression material around the location of the impression coping and adequate detail of the surrounding teeth. Use a prosthetic driver to unscrew and remove the impression coping screw, and then remove the impression coping. Replace the healing abutment immediately to prevent soft tissue collapse. Prepare the impression for pour-up. First, assemble the impression coping and implant analog. Take the impression coping and insert an implant analog onto the indirect transfer impression coping. If using an impression coping with a hexed or engaging interface, rotate the implant analog slightly while inserting it to ensure that the analog drops into the hexed impression coping interface. Next, insert the impression coping screw through the access hole until it bottoms out in the analog. Hand tighten the coping screw with the prosthetic driver until it stops. Do not over tighten and do not torque into place. Insert the impression coping analog assembly into the impression by pressing it firmly into place. Be sure to align the flat face of the coping with the flat face of the impression material. It should snap into position when fully seated. The following steps are typically carried out in the dental laboratory and are not necessarily performed by the restorative clinician. 
Syringe soft tissue replica material around the impression coping and implant analog. Ensure that at least one to two millimeters of the implant analog neck is covered by the soft tissue replica material and then trim as needed. Pour the impression using ISO type four dental stone with low expansion and high hardness properties. Trim the dental model, articulate, and proceed with fabrication of the implant prosthesis using normal laboratory protocols.